is a good day and tomorrow will be a great day. Reason being, I just got off the phone with a freight company and my two posts, Ben Pack car lift, is coming tomorrow. Something that I have wanted for a very, very long time. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys through how I got this thing set up, um, what it all entails, what you're gonna be dealing with, and if, if it's something you wanna try and do yourself. Um, I've heard rumor of professional installs ranging anywhere from five to 800 bucks. Um, I work in industrial maintenance. I fix cars on the side. I'm not really worried about trying to put it up myself. Um, you know, I have more than basic electrical and hydraulic and mechanical ability. So I can't see it being that terribly bad. Um, I'll take you guys through, you know, the requirements for the concrete, the requirements for your shop as far as size and layout and things like that. Um, I'll try and give you guys a good overview of what you need to do and is it something that you want to try and do yourself. Thanks for watching. So as far as a bin pack lift, a two post, um, they require 12 feet wide on the wide configuration and 11 feet wide in the narrow. Uh, I have enough space here. My bay here is about 15 foot just over. So I'm going to go uh, on, with a wide configuration. I've got the room for it. There's no reason not to. Um, as far as the ceiling, they require 12 feet and they recommend at least like 12 foot six. There's a couple guys that just squeak by around 12 that I've seen, but they recommend 12, 12 six just for um, drywall and light fixtures and things like that. Um, I've got 14 feet here, so I've got scissor trusses. It's not going to be even close. Um, the other requirement is the concrete. Um, the main thing with the concrete is they want 4,000 PSI and four inches thick. Um, this building or this garage was just built um, about six months ago. I physically watched the guy pour the floor and I have pictures before the floor was poured. So I can reference the floor against where it is now against the block in the pictures and be able to tell you exactly how many inches of floor that I have poured. Um, I understand not everybody might not have that luxury. Um, in that case, what you're gonna have to do is basically drill some holes in your floor. I mean, there's no other way around it. Um, and just test the depth. If you have any doubt, um, you're probably gonna have to pour a pad, you know, obviously like a three foot by three foot pad. Um, where you plan on putting the posts, I'm not gonna have to do that. Um, so my install may be a little less invasive than what yours may be, but just so you guys know. So the other thing that needs to be brought up about this installation is the wiring. Uh, it requires number 10 wire, which is a 30 amp breaker. Um, it's 10-2 is what I'm going to run over. Uh, if you have a long run from your main panel, you should probably step it up to 8 gauge just to uh, alleviate any voltage drop issues. Um, obviously, you know, you got to make sure you have adequate space in your panel, and I do. Um, I'm not going to take you into the wiring details as far as in this, the electrical panel. I'm going to take you guys through um, on the on the lift itself because it, everybody's electrical panel and electrical setup in their house is going to be different than what I do. There's too many variables for me to just try and cover all that. So I'm going to simply leave it at um, how to hook up power to the lift and make the lift work. As far as interior electrical, you're on your own on that one. Uh, there's too many electrical, local electrical codes and things like that going on for me to even try to help you guys through. And it seems like, you know, with the internet, everybody's, uh, has a different opinion on things. Shocking. I know. So the first thing you want to do after you figure out that a, it's going to fit in your shop. Um, next thing I did was I want to figure out my biggest vehicle is pull that in and just try to figure out where my columns are going to end up because you know, in a vehicle this big, the center of gravity of the vehicle obviously comes into play. So you're gonna to have to try and figure out where that column needs to go 
to try and keep the vehicle balanced, but yet give yourself enough room to be able to work around the outside of the vehicle. Um, I've kind of got a rough idea where it's going to be, but it's something that I still need to 100% iron out. And from what I've found, most of these bigger trucks, you pull the you pull the truck in just past the mirror on the column, and that's usually how they set them up on an asymmetric. Obviously, a symmetric is going to be set up a little bit further back. Guys, that's it as far as your uh, basic requirements for your shop. Um, what I'm going to do is in part two, we're going to go through uh, how I got it off the truck, what all is comes with the lift itself. Uh, I'm going to do kind of like a unboxing video, if you will. You're going to get my thoughts on my whole um, purchase and delivery experience, let's say. Um, stay tuned for part two, guys. I'll put a link somewhere around. I'm not sure where to part two. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.